with the new Helldivers 2 patch bringing gigantic updates to the game's meta, with game-changing buffs and nerfs across the board. Pretty much every build guide and strategy is now wrong and outdated, and we'll see you getting destroyed by both bots and bugs alike. Therefore, following my patch notes video, link below, where I tested out all the new changes, I have done further testing to come up with some brand new strategies to help us rid the galaxy of the alien threat and spread freedom to the far reaches of the universe for democracy. I've decided to split my original guide in two, and today we'll be covering the new best methods to deal with the Terminids. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for part two coming soon, covering the bots. If you've already seen my first video on this, then unless you'd like a refresher, feel free to skip to the Brood Commander, as the tactics for the smaller threats remain exactly the same. It's only the medium and large enemy tactics that have changed some quite dramatically, now that certain weapons have been nerfed into the ground, and others significantly buffed. As we're starting off with the Terminids, there are 12 different variations of Terminids, so now let's progress down from easiest to hardest and I'll talk you through them all, what you can expect, and what to do when you encounter them. Obviously, I don't want to bore you and drag this video out, so we won't really dwell on the easy ones. Let me just skim past them nice and quickly, so we can get to how to tackle the tougher Terminids later on in the list. Firstly, the very basic Terminid is the Scavenger. They're tiny little bugs that crawl up to you at surprising speed and nibble at your ankles. If you let them get near you, they are fairly damaging. A good five or six bites will kill you. And considering they're the weakest enemy in the game and they can come at you in swarms, don't underestimate them. However, they all die from pretty much one shot from any weapon. So my advice with scavengers is just try and be spatially aware and don't get yourself caught out and swarmed by them and you'll be absolutely fine. The next easiest enemy is the Bile Spitter. These look very similar to scavengers and they are tiny little baby bile spewers. They are even slower than scavengers, just as weak. The only thing that makes them dangerous is they now have a short ranged attack. Again, tackle them the exact same way as scavengers. Use a weak weapon so that you're not wasting your big powerful weapons. Just one-shot them and mind where they are. Next up, the most rank and file of the medium-sized bugs is the warrior. The warrior is most similar in shape to the brood commander, and they are effectively a baby brood commander without any kind of armor. Arguably as easy to beat as the scavengers, one direct shotgun blast or five or six bullets from any assault rifle is going to melt these guys. Just be careful because if you do opt to shoot their head off, they can survive for a few seconds without the head and continue hacking at you. Now that all the normal, boring, easy bugs are out of the way, we'll move on to the slightly more powerful ones. Next up, you have got the Nursing Spewer. These things are like the weaker, younger brother of the Bile Spewer. They have exactly the same amount of health, however their attacks don't last as long, they deal slightly less damage, and they also have less tracking than the Bile Spewers, so they are slightly easier to avoid. As with the Warriors, their weak spot may not be as obvious as it first seems. As I mentioned with the Warriors, you want to actually focus on the legs. With Nursing Spewers, you want to focus on the head. Though you can blow up the giant egg sac at the back, the head is weaker, and unlike the Warrior, once you blow up the head, they will stop in their tracks and die immediately. The only thing you need to watch out for is their ranged bile attack, and you will see they lift their head to one side or the other when they're about to do this attack, so just dive in the opposite direction, and you should avoid it 99.9% .9 of the time. Other than that, blast their head, and they'll go down in no time at all. Next up, we've got the Brood Commander. Bosses in lower level difficulties, regular enemies in higher difficulties. You can treat these things the exact same way as Warriors. Just be careful, they are far faster, far more powerful, and they take a lot more bullets to take down. At this point in my first video, I advised you to primarily focus on the legs. And though this isn't incorrect, there is another equally as solid method that is a lot quicker. Effectively, by destroying the Brood Commander's legs, they will then have to start limping and eventually crawling at you, obviously making this a far safer method. However, it does take considerably longer than my other tactic, because you do tend to have to destroy all of their legs before they will actually die. So if you've got some distance between you, perhaps the better method is just to blast off their head and keep backing off. 
with their head gone they will start sprinting at you for a few seconds so it's far more dangerous up close but this is a significantly quicker method as long as you're confident they can't catch you before they fall to the ground and eventually die next up is another bug that seems to miss people's lists and that is the hive guard as the name suggests these guys will primarily spawn when you start attacking any nests and despite the fact that they are lower down in the hierarchy than the brood commander the hive guard are far more powerful for one big reason they have a huge amount of armor on both their head and their front two legs and when they start being attacked, they will hunker down and completely resist most forms of damage. If you have something quite armor-piercing, such as the expendable anti-tank, the recoilless rifle, or the railgun, these will absolutely melt them, most likely in one shot. However, if you need to fight them any other way, then you want to get up close and personal and aim for the neck. You will almost always be able to breach the armor in between the head and the leg, and shooting them, for example, with a shotgun shell up close will stun them enough that it will break them out of this defensive stance, and you can then just stun lock them to death by repeatedly shooting at the same spot. Before we continue on to the next enemy, just a quick public service announcement that friendly fire is also enabled for your enemies. Here is a bile spitter practically one-shotting a hive guard for me. Now we come to the top five actually genuinely difficult Terminids to fight. The next Terminid we'll look at is probably my most hated, especially when they gang up on you in packs. That is, of course, the Hunter. You can also encounter lighter colored baby hunters. They can leap much bigger distances. These ones are actually a different bug variant called the Pouncer. And though they may seem equally as intimidating at first, like the scavengers they do not really pose any threat they are very very weak and will most likely die in one hit from pretty much all damage sources i'm talking about the fully grown adult hunters with more of an orange hue i'd say the one thing that makes these the scariest is that they will telegraph your attacks and if you are aiming your gun in their direction, if possible, they will automatically jump out of the way. It's a very clever feature of the AI and it makes them super scary, especially if there is a swarm of them and you're playing on solo. The Hunter is really the only Terminid I do not have any proper solid advice for, other than use quick firing weapons with a higher chance to hit them. These are definitely some of the tougher bugs to deal with, but one great little tip if you do keep missing them and they do manage to get up close, don't forget you have a melee feature. If they get right up in your face, you can melee them, which will stun them for a brief second, open some distance and allow you to bring your primary weapon back out and shoot them in the face before they have a chance to jump away again. The melee attack is very underused, probably because it's so weak and inefficient in most scenarios, but against hunters it's actually a really good tool when most other tools just won't cut it. Another super effective method since the buff is the flamethrower, this is a ridiculously fast way to kill them. With the 50% increased damage they melt. Though be careful because when they're on fire if they jump at you they can also set you on fire and melt your face too. So the flamethrower is definitely a very high risk, high reward weapon now and can absolutely obliterate swarms of hunters and pouncers in seconds. Now we're talking about the big brother of the hunter. One of the scariest terminids to face, the stalker. This will only show up in certain missions. It's twice as fast as the hunter, three times more powerful and the damn thing can go invisible. It's also the only Terminid that can outrun you even at a sprinting speed, so there is no option to run away from a Stalker. If you see a Stalker, you have to deal with it, that's your only option. You can even outrun a Bile Titan, admittedly only when you're sprinting, but even the Stalker will catch you when you're sprinting. Using things like spores and smoke grenades will help you see them easier when they are cloaked, but even without that, they're not tremendously hard to spot when they're cloaked. That's not the real issue. Their real issue is their speed and their power. Feel free to waste any big powerful weapons you have dealing with the Stalker as quickly as possible. Whether it be a railgun or a machine gun, do whatever you can to kill this thing as quickly as possible. 
But my biggest tip and the most important advice when facing stalkers is always run in the direction it just attacked you. Stalkers will only spawn when there is a stalker layer somewhere on the map. And each time another one pops up, follow where it came from until you track down that layer and you can blow it up. And please be warned, on higher difficulty missions, you can encounter multiple stalker layers. So if you've already blown it up and you're still being attacked by them, there's another one. Rinse and repeat the exact same process. Make this your primary objective until all stalkers and stalker layers have been defeated. There is just one more terminid to cover before we get onto the big two, and that is the bile spewer. You pretty much already know exactly how to deal with the bile spewer, having listened to my tips for the nursing spewer. This is just the bigger, fully grown version of the nursing spewer. It has the exact same amount of health, though it does slightly more damage and its attacks can be a bit more annoying because the bile spew itself can reach a wider cone. It also lasts longer and deals more damage, but the strats for taking it down remain the exact same. Aim for the head, dive to the side. That's the main thing you need to know about bile spewers. Ideally, kill them from range. My favorite way to deal with bile spewers, especially if they're in groups, is get out the grenade launcher. It will two-shot bile spewers no matter where you hit them. So if you have three bile spewers all clumped up, try and aim for the middle one, and two or three grenade shots with splash damage should take out all three of them. Even though individually these are some of the least scary enemies, if you let them get too close when dealing with a swarm and you miss the bile spew, it can sow chaos even amongst a team of four. So always keep an eye out for them and try and deal with them at range if you can, because this way they remain very weak and harmless. And now we're on to the big two. Let's finally talk about the charger. Where is its weak spot, Dom? It's clearly the rear. That's the only place it isn't armored. Well, even though all of your shots will deal normal damage to the back of the charger because it isn't armored, it isn't classed as a weak spot. What you need to do is shoot the armor off either of its front two legs and you will see a very different colored soft flesh underneath. Your attacks will now deal an insane amount of bonus damage when shooting these legs. So what I like to do is use something like the recoilless rifle to strip the armor from its legs. Previously, as I'm sure you're all aware exactly how much I love the railgun, I would have advised the railgun for this. However, as you can see from this footage taken from my patch notes video, it's not very effective anymore. And though it will eventually strip the armor from their legs, it takes many shots to do so. And this is far more risky than it needs to be. Or alternatively, the new and improved flamethrower can melt charges in about eight seconds as it will bypass all of their armor and deal tremendous amounts of damage. Using these tactics or something similar will mean that you don't have to wait until the charger is already running past you and get a few quick pot shots in before it turns around to face you again. This way you're able to keep up the pressure at all times, just hitting it head on and diving out the way at the last second. Alternatively, another fantastic strategy is to use probably my favorite stratagem, the Eagle Airstrike, as this is powerful enough to strip the armor from wherever it hits the charger, be it the legs or the side of its body or wherever. And now you can use any weapon you want to pummel it where that armor has come off and finish it off in this newly created weak point. Or, as a last resort, if your team have plenty of orbital lasers and rail cannons, they work too. But ideally, you'll want to save them for the last enemy on this list, the Bile Titan. And now, finally, for the Bile Titan. Um, yeah, just use the rail cannon orbital strike or the 500 kg bomb. Thanks, bye! <laughs> For real though, these things are practically invincible to all forms of damage. They do have two giant sacks underneath them that you can blow up, and it will deal a significant amount of damage to them each time you blow up one of these sacks. But unlike the charger, it doesn't reveal any kind of weak spot. They are still going to be immune to all but the highest of armor piercing damage. So you are going to need something like the rail cannon or the 500 kg bomb to finish them off in most instances. Though three fantastic support weapons that won't outright kill them instantly, but are insanely powerful when it comes to dealing with the Bile Titans are the expendable anti-tank, the recoilless rifle and the spear. 
for how starved for ammo the spear is, I really wish it would guarantee a one-shot on these things. It seems like a really big investment, only a moderately sized reward. I feel like the spear needs a buff, but nonetheless, it's still a great option against the Bile Titans. Also, the Auto Cannon Sentry is pretty damn effective at helping you deal with Bile Titans. It can't solo them 1v1 unless fully upgraded with ship modules. Usually it can, to be fair, but even without your ship modules, with very minimal input from you, the two of you should definitely be able to fell a Bile Titan pretty damn quickly. If you can just always have a member of your team with a well-aimed 500 kg bomb or ideally the orbital rail cannon and that should deal with them in no time at all and now that you know how to effectively deal with all the terminates we will discuss the bots in the next video and this is where even more of the new buffs from the recent patch will come into play spoiler alert the laser cannon is amazing against bots and with that, my friends, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.